Hello all you beautiful people and welcome back to the channel. Hope you're enjoying the scenery of my videos. Hope I'm providing enough info on the wheels and parts. Please subscribe and ring that bell. Comment if I forget anything. If you have any questions on this wheel or wheels in general, I do my best to help. And don't forget to like the videos. So this is the part two of the range test. I actually found this trail on the maps and it was supposed to be a 56 mile trail. So I was really hoping, okay, back to the farmland, the flat valleys, I'll be able to ride this thing straight through until it's an extreme tilt back. And unfortunately there is construction on the trail coming up here shortly and it cut the journey a little short. So. That was unfortunate. I gotta be able to ride out to the end of this and back. There's no bridge, so I had to go back to the car. It was about seven miles total, 7.14 or something. And then I ended up turning the wheel off, heading out to another trail that's in the valley. <clears throat> that's a link trail. And that actually links up with the trails in my part one video. And I did the rest of the range test on that. There's some pretty cool bridges out here. It's some nice scenery. It was about 70 degrees on this day as well, so 70, 72 both days. And the part two here, I didn't actually end up running into any hills or weird off-roading, which was nice. So as far as the S22 goes, this is, it, it becomes a very comfortable wheel. When you first stand on this wheel, like I did at Evie's up in Canada, I was like, dang, this is a thick wheel and it felt uncomfortable coming from the Hero, which is actually pretty narrow, like the S18s. I was surprised at how fat this wheel is, but because of the way it rides and the way the battery packs are and everything, it after about 10, 15 miles, you get really used to this wheel and you find out it's a very comfortable wheel. You can see it's got very flat riding pedals, which King Sung is known for, and I really appreciate that because I don't tend to typically like the upward outward angle of most Bagode wheels. The Hero actually has fairly flat pedals too, which is nice. But as far as the suspension goes on this, I have been tweaking it a little bit out here just on the street riding stuff. And it's gotten a little softer, it absorbs a little bit more, but it is still very bumpy. I did buy an upgraded shock for this wheel that comes with three different spring rates. A 650, a 550, and a 450. I will be testing out and posting a video here hopefully tomorrow. This wheel is very smooth, it's got a very wide tire on it, and it has solid parallel battery packs, which I really appreciate King Sun doing, so if anything were to happen with one of the packs, it's just going to reduce your range, whereas the Master, it has four individual packs, which your legs kind of sit between the two on each side, which bruises the crap out of your legs unless you have pads that go all the way up to the top to prevent those corners from digging into you. And each pack is actually in series, so if anything goes wrong with one of those packs, your wheel is basically SOL, which is very unfortunate. I heard that they're working on making a parallel version of that wheel. We will see if that actually comes out. But for now, this wheel is becoming my favorite wheel. I've been riding it more than the Hero because of these tests, and it has gotten extremely comfortable. It's a very nice wheel. This is the second trail I had to head out to because that first one, the bridge was not even closed, but completely gone. So again, it's just, as you can see, all flat land and you know, about, about 20 to 25 miles an hour. Every time I looked at my watch, I was doing about 23 to 25. I had some higher points and some lower points. I'll post the EUC specs of part one and part two at the end of this video as far as you know being able to do the math of adding them all up the voltages of where i sat the power used all of that these are my power pads that i'm riding with on here they are my pips or modular pads they are very comfortable the pads themselves are actually pretty squishy and i could adjust that but so far riding this wheel from the stock pads to these pads is a much much more comfortable ride the stock ones that foam is soft but it tends to be it's it's a little firm so you definitely get some bruises around your ankles if you don't have them placed perfectly or you're curb hopping or doing some off-roading stuff but all in all 
besides the pads, this wheel is quite amazing. I mean, the range is so far really good. I'm quite impressed with it. You can see I'm kind of swaying around there. This tire is very, very stable, way more stable than the CST on the Master and the Hero. It has kind of staggered knobs, which creates a nice smooth transition between all of them. So it's really easy to turn on the wheel and it keeps it very stable because you're not getting locked into those vertical aligned knobs like the other tire. I have no idea what the PSI is on this tire at the second range part because I took it off-roading and lowered it before I recharged the wheel and started doing this and I actually never checked it so I was off-roading at 42 PSI and I just stuck my thumb in that valve to air it down a lot to see if it would help with the bouncies and it, it didn't really but it helped keep traction a little bit better so as far as what it's at here you can see it doesn't really look low it's not flattening out at the bottom I'm guessing it's probably 28 to 34 PSI still but all in all you know it, between 28 and 40 PSI if you're just on the streets this thing rides great there's no point where it's unstable feeling it is just a very smooth rolling very easy to stand on and ride wheel. I am quite impressed with it. The seat is probably my only complaint because of how thin it is, but all in all, you know, it's, besides my pad upgrades, I have no complaints on this wheel. It looks amazing from the side profile. It's very basic, but you look at it and you're like, that's the future of wheels, and all the stuff it comes with is just impressive. I turned around there because I was at 15% battery hoping I was gonna make it back but I started getting some beeps, I started getting some speed warnings and I I didn't think it rode as far as I did at those speeds and I was like ah if I turn around at 15% battery I'll make it back and here is right there you can see I'm already at 5% and it started reducing my speed at 20% it reduced it down to 20 miles an hour or so at 15% it was about 15 miles per hour below 10% I think it was like 12 or 15 as soon as I hit 5% it kept beeping at me above like 8 and I was able to ride I think a mile and a half or so from 15% all the way down to the 5 or 1% and at 0% at 5 miles an hour or so I, I got another mile or so out of the wheel. I've never ridden a wheel to extreme tilt pack. I never plan to do it again, but I definitely wanted to get a full range test from the 99% these wheels will charge to down to the 0%. And coming up here is what happened next. Well, everybody, it looks like we are currently riding at 0%. <clears throat> I've gone about a mile or so from the last 5%, but it's been beeping. It started beeping at 20 miles an hour at 15%, and it started beeping at 10 miles an hour at about 10%, give or take. And now it's just, it's just beeping. She's not happy. If I exceed seven miles an hour, I get a bunch of beeps. So no extreme tilt back yet, but you guys can see that on the camera. It's at 0%, so I'm expecting it to dump me here at some point or go into the extreme tilt back like I've seen on other YouTube videos, but I overjudged this one because I'm about a five mile walk back to my car if this thing dies. I hope that even an extreme tilt back that could at least trolley it for however long with its self balancing. There's the nice lake that I got to ride by. That lake's about five miles from my car. So unless I walk it back or find somebody to give me a ride, She's definitely not going to make it back to my car. I left with, I think, 36 or 38% battery. 
I turned around when I was at 15% battery and that 15% battery did not get me very far. About, um, I don't know, I think, I think we're going on a mile and a half now from the 15% down to where we're at now. So I'm, gu I'm guessing from 15% to dead, you're gonna get about two, two and a half miles. At a not very good pace. I mean, still better than walking, but not getting very far at all. So, nice scenery though. Nice little lake. Might have to take myself a nice break if it uh, dies on me. I got water in my backpack as always. I don't typically ride this much and this far, but I've been doing the range test for you guys. This is part number two of the range test. The first one I got 36 miles from 99% to still riding 0%. Gone another quarter mile and it's definitely beeping. It is getting quite toasty here in the sun. I think it's 85 degrees or something today. A little warmer than I'd like to ride, but nice day regardless. So, the zero percent I've been riding for a quarter mile, it's now beeping at anything over six miles an hour. Keep getting slower and slower, but still better than walking by foot. So, got this little exclamation point on the screen. Flashes between that and the mile per hour, kilometer per hour, I guess you'd say, that I'm going, because there's still no update yet that fixes the display to put it in mile per hour, but regardless, I got my watch here, so. And I actually checked this against Google Maps to see how relative it is to actual speed, and this wheel is basically spot on with Google Maps, unlike the Master, which was an EC world off by exactly 10 miles an hour for some reason. This seems to be right on the money. So five miles an hour is what we're getting now and uh, gone about 0.3 miles since we were at zero. I could definitely feel a little bit of odd hesitation in the wheel. You know, it's almost like the S18s when you go to kick off from a start, they kind of have a, a weird vibration to them that I noticed and a lot of other wheels are really smooth that don't actually do that but this is kind of feeling like that. Oh, here we go. Ugh. We are to the point ladies and gentlemen. Look at that. That is some extreme tilt back there. So a little unfortunate that I got about four and a half miles left to walk but I could trolley it that far, then uh, that'll be good. Since it's so far tilted back, it actually wants to roll backwards, which is quite funny because the way that the wheel weight is. So there's hesitation, actually. There's a resistance to it trying to push it forward like it doesn't want to go. But as I mentioned in other videos, this wheel's a lot easier to uh, trolley backwards. So you can actually see it riding itself now that it's going backwards which is quite funny so i guess it's going to go into stream tilt back forward as I'm technically riding it backwards right so there's going to be some uh, resistance here there it is there's the resistance so makes it very unfortunate that you know when you get to this point that trolleying isn't really an option you got extreme tilt back one way or the other. So, uh, at least I got some shade coming. Because I was in the sun for quite a while. I will update you guys with total mileage and everything. This is the final specs on the wheel. You can see this is from day one, the 99% here, where my range started at the user distance the voltage of the wheel. This is the first stop, so I got 10.06 miles. I stopped, had a drink at 91%. 
this is the I had to reconnect here so I went another 26.07 miles in the part one video ended with 48% battery and then this is the data sheet starting on part two 49% is where I started at because you know the wheel got a rest I rode 7.14 miles and was at 36% on that first trail this is when I started the wheel at 38% from it resting and this is the second trail on part two that you saw earlier from there I rode 8.95 miles until I hit the zero percent I rode about a mile or so on that one percent or zero percent sorry and then this is just the final specs I actually got 52.2 miles total that includes the about mile or so I rode at the zero percent until it hit extreme tilt back you can see here on battery one battery two there is nine and eight percent on them I'm guessing that is a safety margin thing I'm not really sure but from part one and part two's video I did end up with 52.2 miles total which is quite impressive it's more than I've been getting on the hero it's actually double what I got on the master molly cell p42a and you know without extreme tilt back safety margins I would say you're good for 50 miles at a 220 pound rider on flat land doing 20 to 25 miles an hour I hope that you guys enjoyed the video I hope that you guys provide your range tests this is all the specs I provide if there's any questions you have please put them in the comments below please subscribe and ring that bell like comment share I hope you have a beautiful day, you beautiful people. I got a ride. I didn't have to walk four and a half, five miles back to my car. If I had these people's names, I'd definitely give them a shout out in the video. They picked me up and drove me back to my car, so it's very nice of them. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. You're awesome.